Well, Sam, I hate to say it, but with the dinos on their way, things don't look good for your boys, the proto-mammals. The dinosaurs were fierce, but how could they compete with those head-butting monsters? I mean, mess with them and prepare for some serious... A whacking and thwacking and pushing and shoving. And that's how the proto-mammals took care of business. Yeah, but unfortunately, those days were coming to an end. The Permian period was the glory days for the proto-mammals, and they'd gotten pretty comfortable. Thanks to evolution, their family tree had branched out all over the place. They probably thought they were above the laws of nature. But at the beginning of the Triassic period, about 250 million years ago, our proto-mammal ancestors started mysteriously disappearing. And the biggest ones went first. No one knows exactly why. But at the same time, the first dinosaurs were breeding like rabbits. This was the beginning of what we here at Bonehead Detectives like to call the Age of Dinosaurs. And with a name like the Age of Dinosaurs, you can guess that the proto-mammals weren't exactly the stars of the show anymore. It's kind of sad, really. As the big proto-mammals all died off, only a few of the small ones survived. They would have to share their world with the dinosaurs. Thrinaxodon was one of the most famous of these survivors, and one of the cutest. Whoa, Thrinaxodon's busted. Now, what did a little cutie like him ever do? Don't worry, Tim Rowe just brought Thrinaxodon in for questioning. He's looking at its skull structure to try to get a better picture of what was going on inside the little guy's head. The CAT scanner uses an x-ray beam to effectively slice this specimen as if it were a loaf of bread. And uh, by going through this slice by slice by slice, we can see all kinds of details of the anatomy of Thrinaxodon. Go all the way through this specimen automatically like that, visualize the internal details, the external details in just a few seconds. Thrinaxodon spent millions of years hiding from dinosaurs, and that taught him a lot. Of all the proto-mammals, his brain was one of the most developed. He was getting close to being as smart as a real mammal, but he still had a ways to go. When you compare his brain to the brain of a modern possum, Thrinaxodon was uh, kind of a numbskull. The next big question is, when did the first real mammals show up? Look, Sam, machines don't know everything. Like, even with all this technology, there are still mysteries that the dino detectives haven't solved. Such as, when did the proto-mammals start giving birth to live offspring the way modern mammals do, instead of laying eggs like reptiles? To answer that question, boneheads would need tissue samples from these guys. And unfortunately for them and us, fossilization only preserves bones and teeth. Another mystery that still puzzles the experts is when did the proto-mammals start growing hair, which is another thing that all mammals have in common. If Thrinaxodon was as much like a possum as Tim Rowe thinks, then maybe it did grow hair. Nicholas Houghton thinks so. There's great big holes in the front of its muzzle, like this. These holes were passages for blood vessels and nerves, which may have been uh, the innervation and blood supply of whiskers, which are sensory organs. But whiskers are specialized hair, and if they had whiskers, maybe they had hair also. So uh, a living thrinaxodon may have looked even more like a possum than their skulls do. In other words, they were warm-blooded and hairy. Tim Rowe brushes that idea aside. This area of the brain is involved in mapping the sensory input from the hair over our body. In thrinaxodon, that region is missing. So if thrinaxodon did have hair, it didn't have as much hair as modern mammals did. Hair didn't provide quite the sensory input. If it didn't have as much hair, it also wouldn't provide quite the insulation that it provides in modern mammals. So if Thrinaxodon did have hair, it wasn't keeping it as warm as the hair keeps modern mammals. Thrinaxodon probably wasn't warm-blooded quite in the sense that modern mammals are. One thing that's pretty clear is that modern mammals started showing up around the beginning of the Jurassic Age, about 210 million years ago. And here's what one of them looked like, enjoying some delicious raw egg al fresco. They weren't any bigger than a squirrel, and they pretty much stayed that size until the dinosaurs became extinct, around 65 million years ago. Extinction? It's not a pretty picture. Not for the ones it kills off, no. But for our little friends, the mammals, it was the big break they were waiting for. Thanks to their ancestors' dogged determination, mammals evolved into all different kinds of species, including early man. Today, mammals dominate the planet with their incredible diversity of shape, size, and smell. Smell? Have you ever smelled a gorilla? I usually hang with fossils, but I can see the charm of mammals, especially the guy with the arrowhead. Nice arms. Pretty amazing to think that it all started with great-grandma Dimitrodon 280 million years ago.
It hasn't exactly been smooth sailing for the mammal crew. But at least we survived the tidal wave of extinction. I know I'm glad. Well, that about wraps it up for the meat-eating, fast-heating Dimetrodon and her family. The evidence is uh, pretty convincing. Yeah, the mystery of where mammals like us came from is finally solved, so uh, we can all go home now. Hey, what's your rush? I've got practice, remember? Oh, yeah. Are the Screaming Boneheads going to be in concert soon? Yeah, well, we just got our first gig. And I uh, figure we should be uh, playing the Enorma Dome in a couple of weeks, so come check us out. Oh, those are big plans. I bet Great Grandma Dimitridon would be proud. Yeah, we were even thinking of putting those huge sails on our backs. Oh, good idea. Keep you cool while you're rocking the house down. Yeah, maybe that, but uh, the girls love it. Oh, please. Oh, come on. You know the girls love it. Hey, maybe I could use my bass. You know, you know, Grandpa, old great Grandpa Irving used to play the washboard bass. Did he? Yeah. Hey, I, I never heard that story. Never heard that? Hey, but you could win the girls over with your guitar, and then you could talk to them about dinosaurs. That'd be really cool. Yeah, because th they'll be attracted to the guitar. They'll be attracted to all the knowledge you have about dinosaurs. That's right. 